All right, we're going back to the classics today. We just have a classic Sudoku, no special rules or anything. Um, a few things that I want to talk about with classic Sudokus is, first of all, if you haven't heard of Snyder notation, named after Thomas Snyder, um, this is the way I like to do it. A lot of people do. You can use whatever notation you want, especially if you're doing pencil and paper. You can put in fancy symbols, you can color things, but um, what I think is helpful is uh, Snyder notation is essentially you use the corner marking for any place where you're saying these are the options for that digit. So you're saying in this situation that these two are where the one could be in this box. Um, if I put threes and fours down here, you're saying there's a three or a four in one of these cells. The center notation, if I put a three and a four there, means those are the options for that cell. So you're saying that this cell has to be a three or a four. And it helps to have both of those because you could end up with, you know, a three, four, five are the options for the cell, but a three and a four have to be in one of these. And you kind of get both types of notation that way. And you can keep them straight if you are consistent. But whatever notation you use, my tip is basically be consistent with your notation and know what it means. Um, all right, a couple other things we're going to talk about. Um, X-wings. Uh, X-wings are an interesting pattern that you can look for. Um, I've got an example here. So essentially what we do is if we look at the ones, um, I filled in kind of the candidates here because you've got these three ones. So you can't have a one in any of those. So these are the options. You can't have a one here. So you've got three options there. Down here, because of those two, you've got these three, um, and then this one here. So this is just, I just filled in some random numbers, but the point is, um, right now, there's lots of options for ones. It doesn't look like we can do anything with those. But what we can do is if you look at row three and row, uh, no, row three and row eight, what you'll notice is, Let's highlight those. Let's make them yellow. There we go. All right, in row three, where can you put a one? You can't put a one in any of these because of that one there. You can't put a one here or here, obviously, because there's already digits there. You can't put a one here where the two is. You can't put one here because of the one in the column down here. So your only options are these two cells right here in that row. In row eight, Let's look at where you can put a one. You can't put one here, 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 because that's a one in that box. Again, the two and the five and the three are ruling out those cells, and the one here is ruling out this one in that column. So your only options are those two cells. So when you have only two options in two rows and they're in the same column, or alternatively, you could have only two options in two columns and those are in the same row if you just turn the whole thing sideways. That's called an X-wing because it kind of makes a sort of an X pattern here because you know there's a one either here or here. Those are the two options here. It has to be one here or here. Similarly down here, there has to be a one here or here. So let's think about what would happen if there's a one here. If you put a one there, these two cannot be ones. It would force a one into that cell. The other option is that you have a one here, which can't be there, so it would force a one right there. So it, that means that essentially there's a one here or here, and a one here or here. So that rules out all the possibilities in the rest of those two columns. So we can remove this one, and this one, and these two, and that one as options. And now look what that did to this box five here. This has to be the one now because that's the only option left. And now that gives us a one over here. So where you couldn't really rule them out before, it gave us two digits there by using an X-wing. So that can be super helpful. Um, we've also narrowed down the possibilities in some of these others, even though we didn't get a digit for sure. Now there's only two options in this box, um, two options in this box, and actually the one there, really not that one. So we narrowed it down to two options in this box as well. So we've we've reduced the, ch the, the possibilities a lot. So those are X-wings. You're looking for a spot where um, 
a digit can only appear in two places in the row or in the column um, and they correspond to the same row or column uh, on the other one. That's called an X-wing. Now, if you want to get more complicated, we look for, uh, well, more complicated than X-wing, you can also do um, three options in three. So uh, let's get rid of this. Let's say that we had um, in this row, this isn't going to work with these digits, but just for example, if we had these as possibilities, if we decided this was where the ones could be, this would be called um, a swordfish. If you have three options and three rows and or columns um, connected like an X-wing, but extended into three. And if you extend it into four options, then it's called a jellyfish. And I think there's names for the other ones too, but I mean, jellyfish and swordfish, and they're hard enough to spot, let alone the ones that have more options than that. So um, I don't worry about those too much. These are hard enough to find. Um, so then the other thing that's that's useful to look for, and these are pretty hard to see too. I think sometimes X-wings are easier, but this is a Y-wing. And the way a Y-wing works is, uh, I just kind of filled in some options here, whatever the digits are. It's not too uncommon to end up with, you know, 1, 8, 1, 3, 1, 3, 8, where you have a, a triple here, right? A triple, we've got a triple across here, 1, 2, 8. We've got a pair in this row. We've got a pair in this row. These are pretty common things that you would see. Um, and it doesn't look like there's any real way at this point to um, figure out what any of those digits could be, assuming that the, the other digits in the rows aren't giving, that, giving you that. But <clears throat> one thing you can look for here is these three right here, and it's a kind of a bent thing. Um, basically, if you have two cells that share an option, so you have one, two, and one, three here, so they share one as an option. This one has a two, this one has a three, but they share the one. And then there's a cell that sees both of them. This one right here sees both of those. Here, let's make this blue and these yellow. Okay, so the blue one sees the yellow up here on the column, and it sees this one in the box. And this one, the two options are the other options that aren't shared between these two. So the one is shared, and this one has the two and the three. That's what you're looking for with a Y-wing. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in these positions. You know, this two, three could be up here instead. Um, it could be a lot of places. It doesn't really matter um, as long as this one is in between those two. This one, three could even be over here. And you could do it with those three cells. So what you can do with this is if you think about the options here, so this cell is a two or a three, because we use the center notation and that's what that means. If this was a two, this yellow cell up here is a one because the options were one and two. So if this is a two, that one's a one. If this one is a three, this one is a one. So essentially, no matter what is here, we don't know if it's two or a three, but whatever it is, one of these two cells has to be a one. One of the two yellows has to be a one. And so that tells us a couple of things. It tells us obviously that one of them has to be a one, but that means that any cell seen by both of those cannot be a one because one of those two will be a one. So what we're looking at is right here, this cell right here, let's make it red, that red cell cannot be a one because either this cell is going to be a one, which is in the row and would rule it out, or this one down here is a one, which would rule it out in the column. We would also be ruling out ones from this cell right here. So if your options here were, I don't know, one, five, six, and eight or something like that, it doesn't matter what it is. The point is you could remove the one as an option there. Um, but importantly in this puzzle, this fictitious situation, this one can't be a one. And since it's a one or an eight, now that's an eight, which then lets us take an eight out of there and an eight out of here. And now we're making some progress. Um, so that can be very helpful. Um, you know, you might even be in a situation where uh, this could be one, eight, one, three, and this one might even be three, eight. And so then it'd help even more. You can move the one, you get the eight, and that's gonna give you the three. 
and the one down here and the three there and now you're now you're really moving so um that's called a y wing uh, i guess because it's it's kind of a bent shape i assume that's where that comes from um those can be hard to spot too but look for those look for places where you have especially when you have a lot of two digit options in cells see if you can find one where the two ends share one common number and the number that's not shared between them those are the options in one that's in between the two uh, all right so those are called y wings so look for x wings look for y wings um and that should help a lot with classic sudokus when or also with the variants when you're stuck and you're looking for things uh don't know where to move look for x wings and y wings and you might be able to eliminate some candidates all right that's all i got for today i'll see you guys tomorrow